Over the past two years, I've signed over $500,000 worth of coaching clients using social media. If you've ever wondered how you can do this too, keep watching because I'm about to show you how. Hey, my name's Jason Moss. I'm a business coach for coaches and I've helped thousands of coaches around the world launch and grow their businesses. And look, the tips I'm about to share with you in this video for attracting coaching clients on social media are gonna be super important to your success. But if you wanna dive deeper and get more powerful strategies and tools and guidance to be able to launch or grow your your business and get clients consistently, I also recommend that you download my free client attraction guide that walks through so much more than we're gonna cover in this video. You can get it completely free, just click the link above or below to go download that right now. Now, when I first started my coaching business, I spent a lot of time posting on social media and I knew that that was what I needed to do in order to get clients, but it was frustrating in the early days because it felt like nobody was paying attention to me. I was getting nothing but crickets and other than maybe a heart from my mom or a like from one of my friends or some comment like, oh, you're so so inspirational or this this really resonates, no one was reaching out to me saying, hey, I wanna hire you. And it took me years to figure out what actually worked. And the six tips that I'm about to share with you in this video are some of the most important keys to success. So I hope you take notes, pay attention and apply this stuff because if you use it, it will work. The first key to success is to know your niche. Super important as a coach that you narrow your focus and choose a lane. In other words, you're not trying to speak to everyone through your content, through social media. You're not saying, hey, I can help you with your career, your relationships, or your uh, finances, or your health, you're choosing a specific transformation that you're really offering through your coaching, as well as a specific group of people that you're speaking to through your content. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you think about social media today, you pull up Instagram or Facebook, and you spend two minutes on Instagram, as an example, you're gonna scroll through 100 pieces of content in that short period of time. There's just so much content that all of us are being inundated with on a daily basis. And because of it, whether you realize this or not, you actually have developed all of these filters in your mind. Filters that help you figure out when you're looking at a piece of content really quickly in like a split second, hey, is this something worth paying attention to? Does this speak to my desires and my goals? And if you can't figure that out in like a split second, you're just gonna scroll past it. It's like it doesn't exist. And so I see a lot of coaches on social media posting generic content that's trying to speak to everyone because they don't have clarity on who their niche is and they don't really know that niche very well. And so I'll see stuff like, oh, elevate your life or get to the next level in your life. Just stuff that's like super vague and, and generic. The problem with this is because it doesn't really speak to anyone on a really deep level, it's never gonna get past anyone's filter in their mind. And so when they're scrolling through social media, it's like they don't even see you. Versus as an example in my business, I'm a business coach. I help coaches get clients. Specifically, I work with earlier stage coaches who are in the beginning stages of their journey, launching or growing their business. And so when I create content, I'm able to speak to that. So I might say, you know, hey, do you ever feel like you're just posting and posting all over social media, but getting nothing but crickets? And no one's reaching out to you saying, hey, I wanna hire you as a coach. Now, if you see that, post on social media and you're a coach who also feels that same way, that's gonna land for you. You're gonna pay attention to that because that speaks to your challenges and your desires and the things that you want. So that content is able to connect with you. So this is the biggest key to success when it comes to standing out on social media, when it comes to getting clients on social media, you gotta get past those filters and you do it by narrowing your focus, choosing a lane and also getting to know your niche really well. When you can articulate their challenges and problems and desires and goals and vision better than they even know it themselves. When they see your content, there's gonna be that sense of resonance. There's gonna be that sense of, oh wow, this person is speaking to me. This person understands me. This person gets what I'm going through. This is what we wanna do. Second tip to success is to narrow your focus. So I've noticed in my own coaching business that there's always this tendency to add more, whether that means adding more platforms or showing up in more places or creating more offers or just adding more into my business, hiring more team. There's always this, this push and this pull towards just wanting to do more. And one of the things and the biggest mistakes that I see with a lot of coaches, particularly who are in the early stages of their journey, is they're trying to be in too many places at once. They're spreading their focus way too thin. So I'll see the coach who's like not making much money, but is on like five or six different social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, MySpace, if that's even still a thing. And because they're trying to show up in all these different places, they're not able to show up in 
any sense of depth in any one area. And so they end up missing out on an opportunity to really make a deeper connection with the people that might be on one of those platforms. You don't need to be on a million different platforms at once. This is something that I've shifted and evolved in my business as I've grown. I've started showing up in more and more places as I've had more team to be able to help me with that. But as an example, my first coaching business that I launched back in 2016, I scaled that to six figures and 90% of it was me just showing up on YouTube and creating a YouTube video every week. And I had a little bit going on on Facebook, but honestly, most of it was from YouTube. So I wasn't in a million different places. I made the choice intentionally to show up in one area and really go deep on that one platform. And that worked really well for me. Just remember, you don't need to be on all the different platforms just because other people are showing up or having success in one area doesn't mean you also need to be focused on that area too. Far better to choose one or two specific platforms to focus on, really nail those and get some traction going on those before you start expanding your focus. The third tip to success is to go for growth. Something that's super important to your success on social media is that you've got to have a way of growing your audience. In other words, you've got to have a, a lever that you can pull in your business to get in front of new people who don't know you, who don't know that you exist and bring them back into your world so they can start following you and start uh, building that relationship with you. This is one of the biggest things that I see coaches get stuck on. Like I'll see a lot of coaches who are just posting on their personal Facebook profile again and again and again and again. And you might be able to get a couple clients from this. And I see a lot of coaches who reach out to me, you know, they'd start their business. They they had an initial burst of momentum. A couple clients came through the door, but then, you know, six months down the line, it all fizzled out. And the reason for it is because they were missing that growth engine, that way of bringing new people into the world. So they had exhausted their existing network of people because maybe they were just posting on their personal profile. The thing about posting on your personal profile, at least on Facebook, is it's a great way to speak to your current friends and your followers and your existing network. And you might have a couple clients there, but if there's no way of growing that network, if there's no way of getting in front of new people, you're just gonna burn those people out. And after a certain amount of time, you're not gonna have any new leads. This is one of the first things that we focus on inside Coaching Launchpad, my flagship coaching program for new and early stage coaches. There are lots of different strategies that can work here. This could be creating reels and hashtagging them and posting them on Instagram or TikTok to get you in front of new people in your niche. This could be looking for partners, other Instagram accounts that have followings that are similar to your niche that you can get on a joint live and share each other's audiences. This could be you reaching out to people and building connections and relationships through DMs. There are lots of different ways that you can do this. The key is you gotta have something in place that you can rinse and repeat on a regular basis in order to grow your audience and commit to using that strategy on an ongoing basis so you've got new people coming into your world, ideally every single day. Tip number four is to be the likable expert. So if I had a couple minutes to share with you some of the most important keys to success when it comes to getting clients on social media, this probably what would be like at the top of my list. When it comes to getting clients on social media, your content needs to position you as what I call a likable expert. What is a likable expert? Well, there are two wings to that. There's the likable piece and the expert piece. Likable piece, pretty simple. People need to see your content and they need to feel like, oh, this is someone who's a human being, has values that align with mine that I just feel connected to on a human level. I feel like I can kind of like see hanging out with them just on a friendly basis. Like I feel like I like this person. We wanna do business with people that we like. So the more that you can show people who you are through your content, the more opportunities you're going to create for somebody else to build that connection with you. A lot of this is about showing people your unique personality and your quirks and your values and the things that you might even be afraid to tell people about because you're afraid that it's gonna turn certain people off. For example, when I talk about my spirituality or just being really connected in that way, or I talk about being heart-centered, or I talk about having cancer and going through that experience, these are stories that I share that help certain people feel more connected to me. And on the flip side, other people are gonna be like, mm, this person's not for me. That's great, that's exactly what you want. So what you really wanna do is you wanna dial up the things that make you most unique and most special. The thing you wanna avoid is just being like a generic coach who never shows people who you are and waters down all of the things that you're afraid to share and talk about and tries to be everything for everyone. If you do this, you might have more followers, but no one's gonna really feel connected with you on a deep enough level to feel that sense of, wow, like this is my person. On the flip side, you also need to show people that you're an expert. 
So someone needs to see your content and go, wow, this person really knows their stuff. They've been able to create results for other people. They've been able to create results in their own life. I feel confident that this person can be a shepherd for a specific transformation that I'm trying to make in my life. This is the piece that a lot of coaches struggle with more. And there are a lot of different ways that you can do this well. This could be just teaching and educating. Like for example, if you're watching this video, you're probably, you know, if you're still watching this at this point, you're like, okay, Jason really knows his stuff. So educating, adding value by teaching, sharing some of the mistakes or myths that someone might believe about their situation that just aren't true, creating these little insights or aha moments for somebody else, being the walking billboard for here's the transformation that I'm able to help you through as a result of this transformation that I've made in my own life. For example, if you're a health coach and you're helping people lose weight, talk about your own weight loss journey. I wanna see pictures of you on your profile where you're out on a hike and you look really fit and in shape. I wanna feel like you represent the end point of the transformation that I'm looking to go on, right? So there are lots of different ways that we can do this. Ultimately, what this is about is helping somebody through your content see you as an expert who can really help them and who's qualified to do that. So there's a lot to say on this. We spend a lot of time inside all of my programs teaching you how to do this well because it's such an important key to success. But I wanted to share with you an example of a post that I recently shared that I think represents the kind of balance between being likable and being an expert and how you're just an example of how you might be able to do this in your content. So this is a post, I'll read it now. I've been traveling more than ever this year. Mexico twice, Tulum was my favorite, but Cancun was great too. Napa Valley, Big Sur, San Francisco. We'll be off next week to visit my family. You might be wondering, Jason, you'll make multiple six figures this year. Aren't you busy working your butt off? Kind of. Don't get me wrong, I work hard, but running group coaching calls filled with clients I absolutely love doesn't really feel like work. And I have more than enough time to jet set across the country, sleep in, snuggle with our dog Boomer, binge watch Mad Men with Kimberly, we're on season two. The truth is there's nothing like the freedom that comes from coaching full time. And if you're just getting started as a coach or making less than 5K a month in your business, I wanna show you exactly how I made it happen so you can do it too. So what is this post doing well? Well, the first thing is it's showing people who I am. If you're reading this, you're like, wow, you know, Jason's traveling, he likes Mad Men, he has a dog, he has a partner named Kimberly. So I'm letting you into my life through sharing some details that hopefully will build a little bit of that relationship. There are all those touch points within this piece of content that you could potentially feel connected to as well. So for example, if you've watched Mad Men before, you see that and you're like, oh wow, Jason likes Mad Men too. Now I feel closer with him. Or Jason has a dog too. I also have a dog. So there are all these little touch points that I'm creating for opportunities where you can actually feel connected to me just on a human level. Because you feel like when you read that, you're like, oh, Jason's kind of like me. So that's the first thing. On the flip side, there's a lot of things that are baked in here that position me as an expert. So this is more of like a lifestyle piece of content. And there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but I'm talking about how much I'm traveling. And there's that piece about me making multiple six figures and talking about the freedom that I have as a result of being a full-time coach myself. The reason why I've talked about all these things is because I've had hundreds of calls with coaches and some of the top things that I hear from coaches are number one, I want freedom. I wanna be able to travel. I wanna be able to set my own schedule and work from anywhere and have the flexibility to work when I want and where I want. And so these are all the things that I know my niche really wants. So what I'm doing is I'm basically just reflecting back through this piece of content. Here's me living the life that you wanna live and aspects of the life that you really want. And so this is a way that I can basically position myself as an expert, as someone who's embodying the transformation that you're looking to create in your life. And also just kind of adding these little pieces like, you know, Jason, you're making multiple six figures this year. Like there are pieces that when you hear those things, you're probably like, oh wow, this person like has created a lot of success in their business. They're living a life that I wanna live. So this is a way that I've positioned myself as an expert through this piece of content. So this is a great example of balance these two wings, the likable piece and the expert piece. And sometimes there are certain pieces of the content you might create that lean more on one versus the other. The key is that your content integrates both. And when you're doing this well in your content, when you're showing up in a way that builds that personal relationship and connection, makes someone feel like they like you, as well as positions you as a real expert who can help your niche solve a specific problem, that's when you're gonna have people reaching out to you saying, hey, I wanna work with you. One of the biggest keys to success is you've gotta do this well. The fifth key to success is you've gotta make strong 
strong invitations. Writing great content, creating content like the content we just shared is not enough. If you do that well, that's a piece of success. But it's important to know that when you're showing up, you're creating content like that, you're gonna have people in your audience all the time who are kind of getting to that place where they're like, I wanna work with you. Like, I feel like you could really help me. I feel like I have a problem that you can help me solve. And the next question they're gonna ask themselves is, well, what do I do next? And so you have to tell them as a coach, like, here's what to do. I call this an invitation, which is basically you laying out the path for somebody else. It's you saying, hey, if you're someone like this, if you're someone who is a coach, who's in the early stages of their journey, maybe you're you're just getting started and you're feeling overwhelmed or you're struggling to get clients, you don't know how to fix that. And you wanna be going full-time as a coach and replace your nine to five income and be waking up every day to freedom, then and coaching Launchpad is for you. This is literally everything you need to, to make that happen. If you're ready to make that next step, if you're ready to take that leap and you want help and guidance and mentorship and a community and people who are gonna be on your team supporting you and guiding you every step of that way, here's exactly what to do next. You know, Go to my website, submit an application, click the link down below, go fill that out right now, DM me. We need to be explicit about what those next steps are. And I see a lot of coaches who are showing up, they're creating great content. They've got this amazing content. People are resonating and connecting with what they're putting out into the world, but they never tell people about what they do. They're just too afraid because they don't want to come off as salesy or they don't want to be pushy or aggressive. And because of it, they've got all these people in their audience who want help and need help and could really use and benefit from the coaching program that they have. But there's that disconnect. People don't know what to do next, so they don't do anything. So you need to make powerful invitations and you need to make these consistently. This is not just something that you do every once in a while. This is something that you do regularly, ideally every day as a part of running your business. And this could be through your stories. It could be through your posts. It could be through emails. The medium is not as important as the message. Most important key to success is making those invitations and making them consistently. And when you can do that well, you're gonna have a regular flow of people who are reaching out to you saying, hey, I wanna work with you. What are those next steps? And the sixth key to success is you gotta be consistent. You've probably heard this before. This is not new to you. But social media, creating content, getting clients online takes time because relationships take time. I mean, imagine if you're married right now, maybe you have a partner that you've been with for a while. Think about the time that it took for you to build that relationship. How many dates you went on when you first started getting to know each other, the months over which that relationship unfolded and evolved. It was not like you went out on the first date and suddenly that person was like, hey, do you wanna get married? And you were like, yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, maybe that was you, but chances are for most people, it's not the case. It takes time for relationships to build and you're building relationships online through social media, through your content. So the same principles apply. It's not any different. And so knowing this to be true, something that that's so important is you need to show up consistently. You need to keep creating those opportunities for that connection. If you just show up every once in a while on social media and post when you feel like it, or you you know go post for a while and then you, you get discouraged because you don't get a client right away and then stop showing up and don't post anything for like four weeks, and then you, you maybe show up again. Like It's kind of like if you had a friend who maybe just called you like every once in a while and then you didn't hear from them for like a year, probably not gonna feel that close and that connected to that person versus the person who's like, you're hanging out with every week and you're building that relationship, you're having new experiences. That's how we build relationships and that's how you get closer with people. So the more opportunities you give someone to feel connected to you and the more consistent you are with your content, the more that's gonna happen. So being consistent means showing up and showing up not just when you feel like it, but committing to some level of like, I am going to be an active presence in my business. I'm not just gonna kind of like blow with the wind and show up when I feel like this. I'm gonna treat this as important as sacred because it is, it's building relationships and those, those relationships are gonna happen over time. They're gonna happen with consistency and frequency. The more consistently you can show up, the more clients you're ultimately gonna have. So I hope these six tips were helpful for you. I hope you walked away with at least one thing that you can apply and implement in your coaching business to get more clients. Remember the six tips that we just covered are super important to your success, but there's a lot more that you need to have in place too when it comes to creating clients through social media and also just being able to attract clients consistently in general. And if you want to know some of the other important strategies, keys, uh, the tools, 
to have in place in order to do that in your business, I definitely recommend downloading my free client attraction guide that walks through so much more than we covered in this video. Uh, so many more powerful insights, keys to creating clients, to attracting clients into your coaching business. You can get that completely free. Just click the link above or below in the description to go download that right now. Now, before you go, I'd love for you to leave a comment down below and let me know of the six tips that we covered in this video, was there one that stood out to you? One insight or one aha that you had where it was like, oh wow, like I wasn't thinking about that before and I'm gonna do this differently now. I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway down below. This is one thing that helps you learn is if you actually take the time to like, think about like, what was the biggest thing that I learned and then type it out. Chances are that you're gonna remember that a lot more. So go do that right now. We've got so many awesome videos to come on this channel for free. So if you're a coach who wants help launching, growing your business, you want more tips, guidance, resources, subscribe to the channel. And just remember, I believe in you 1000%. You've got something so important to share and give. So keep showing up in your coaching business, keep putting your butt in the seat, keep creating content, and I'll see you in our next video.